Well, hi everyone, Steve Patterson here from PhotoshopEssentials.com. In this video, I'll show you how to create an antique or vintage photo effect using the Camera Raw filter in Photoshop. The Camera Raw filter is only available in Photoshop CC, but if you're using Photoshop CS6, you can still follow along using the same Camera Raw settings by opening your image directly in Camera Raw. We'll start by creating a custom black and white version of our image. Then we'll apply a sepia tone for an old fashioned look. We'll add grain and a vignette effect and make the image look like it has faded over time by toning down the highlights, lightening the shadows, and reducing contrast in the midtones, all from within the camera raw filter. Be sure to check out the written version of this tutorial on our website where I cover the steps in more detail. Thanks for joining me, and let's get started. Here's the image I'll be using. I downloaded this one from Shutterstock. If we look in the Layers panel, we see the image sitting on the background layer. In a moment, we'll use the Camera Raw filter to create our antique photo effect. But to keep the effect non-destructive, let's apply the Camera Raw filter as a smart filter. To do that, we first need to convert the background layer into a smart object. Click on the menu icon in the upper right corner of the Layers panel. Then choose Convert to Smart Object from the menu. It won't look like much has happened, but if we look at the Layers Preview thumbnail, we now see a Smart Object icon in the lower right corner. This is how Photoshop lets us know that the layer is now a Smart Object. To apply the Camera Raw filter, go up to the Filter menu in the menu bar and choose Camera Raw Filter. This opens the Camera Raw Filter dialog box with the image appearing in the main preview area. If you're not seeing the full screen version of the Camera Raw Filter, click the full screen toggle icon in the upper right. The panel area on the right is where we find different panels with different controls for adjusting the image. The basic panel is the one that opens by default but we can open different panels using the tabs along the top. We'll come back to the basic panel later. For now, let's start with the HSL Grayscale panel. Click on its tab to open it. We can use the HSL Grayscale panel to create a custom black and white version of the image. First, select the Convert to Grayscale option. Your image will instantly switch from color to black and white. To customize the look of the black and white version, use the color sliders. Dragging a slider to the right will lighten any areas that originally contained that color. Here I'm lightening areas that contained red by dragging the red slider to the right. Dragging a slider to the left will darken areas that contained that color. Here I'm darkening areas that contained green by dragging the green slider to the left. Since every image is different, keep an eye on your image as you experiment with the sliders to find the settings that work best. Next, we'll add a sepia tone to the image. Open the split toning panel by clicking on its tab. In the highlights area at the top, Set the hue value to 40 and the saturation to 20. Then in the shadows area, set the hue to 45 and the saturation to 50. Here's my image with the sepia tone applied. Next, open the effects panel by clicking on its tab. First, we'll add some grain to the image. We can adjust the amount size and roughness of the grain using the sliders. I'll set the amount value to 50, the size to 60, and the roughness also to 60. To help us see the grain a bit better, I'll zoom in on the image by making sure I have the zoom tool selected in the upper left corner. Then I'll click a few times on the image to zoom in. To zoom back out, I'll click on the small arrow to the right of the current zoom level and I'll choose Fit in View from the menu. Next, let's fade the corners of the image by adding a vignette. 
We can do that using the Amount slider in the Post Crop Vignetting section. If you drag the slider to the left, you'll darken the corners, which is normally what the slider is used for. In our case, since we want the edges to look like they've faded over time, we want to lighten them. And we can do that by dragging the slider to the right. I'll set the amount value to plus 80. To finish up the effect, open the Basic panel by clicking on its tab. Images that have faded over time have less contrast, and we can reduce the contrast using a few sliders in the Basic panel. First, to tone down the highlights, click on the Highlight slider and drag it to the left. I'll lower mine to negative 70. Then, to lighten the shadows, click on the Shadows slider and drag it to the right. I'll set mine to plus 80. Finally, to reduce the contrast in the midtones, click on the Clarity slider and drag it to the left. I'll lower my clarity value to negative 40, which gives me a softer looking image without losing too much detail. At this point, we've created the antique or vintage photo effect. Click OK to close out of the Camera Raw Filter dialog box. If we look in the Layers panel, we see that because we applied the Camera Raw Filter to a smart object, Photoshop automatically converted it into a smart filter. If you want to go back and change any of your settings, double click directly on the filter's name. This reopens the Camera Raw Filter dialog box where you can make any changes you need. I'll click Cancel to close out of it without making any changes. To compare the effect with your original image, click on the Smart Filter's visibility icon. This temporarily hides the effect from view. Click the visibility icon again to turn the effect back on. And there we have it! That's how to create an old, antique, or vintage photo effect and keep it non-destructive using the Camera Raw filter in Photoshop. If you liked this video, be sure to click the subscribe button. Check out our website, photoshopessentials.com, where you'll find hundreds of tutorials covering Photoshop basics, image editing, photo effects, text effects, and more. As always, thanks so much for joining me, and I'll see you next time. I'm Steve Patterson from photoshopessentials.com.